In a bar chart or a Gantt chart, there are several advantages and several disadvantages. The, let me highlight the advantages first. One, simplicity. It's very easy to read and to understood, and also it's very easy to prepare, as you uh, just saw in a couple of slides before. Uh, very effective uh, in, as a communication tool between engineer and the foreman, or an engineer and a client rep, or uh, executives in your company, and so on. Because not much complicated calculations are involved in bar charts, no basic theory, and anyone can understand them from the uh, all, all type of levels in, in, in the construction projects and the companies. However, with bar charts, there are limitations and major disadvantages. One, the job logic. One major disadvantage of traditional bar chart is the lack of precision in establishing the exact sequence between the construction activities or the work items. It does not clearly show the job logic and uh, among, among these uh, list of activities. And sometimes this is solved by providing arrows between each activity. Um, and like at the end of each bar, you can highlight an arrow going to another bar to show the relationship between the two activities that this will finish. And this other activity is depending on the one before it. This refers to as either a barnet or time-scaled logic diagrams. In my humble opinion, and the literature that I saw and I read here, I would not recommend this kind of uh, uh, approach because uh, it will make it more complicated. It will make it like very uh, connected and all lines between the bars and the arrows, it will not look good. Um, so you are, you are actually making it more uh, problematic for a scheduler or the means of effective communication and the simplicity. That's why I will be talking about other scheduling tools for later in this course about networks or activity on arrows and activity on nodes. A second disadvantage is delaying activity impact. What we mean by that, it's ineffective the bar charts to determine the impact when we delay one construction activity like the bar chart and we say like let's move it a little bit on a project uh, in this in this schedule and how that will affect the entire duration of the project so let's say i moved one of the projects or one of the bars sometimes moving it one day can affect the finish time of the project by one day sometimes you don't affect it at all and sometimes it's affecting it with more than one day. So for the bar chart tool or schedule tool, it's very hard to tell and uh, answer this kind of question. Also, the number of activities, it's basically it's very difficult to comprehend logic when the number of construction activities and the list of activities increased. So if you have a huge project, you will not be able to highlight all these bar charts in just like in one page to be able to understand it from A to Z. It's gonna be a cumbersome. So bar charts may not be practical for projects with a huge number of construction activities, unless sometimes that you, you are using this kind of, uh, uh, of, of scheduling tool in, in certain ways. For example, you can use uh, a bar chart to show a specific section or subset of activities to maintain simplicity. Such as if you want to show, a let's say, a subcontractor 
or a top management team uh, with, with a client or within your company uh, bar charts for certain activities in certain time or certain activities for only specific types of activities like critical ones. And we will talk more in details for later about what we mean about a critical activities. Or you want to show a list of activities in certain location of a project um, or those that will be run by only specific subcontractor. So in this case, you highlight that it's something simple. You show it to the subcontractor and that's what you work on. That location, okay, here's the bar charts and this is for that specific location in, in this tower, in this floor in the tower, in that section, in the east side of that floor, and so on. Another example where, where you use it, even if the project is really big, is to show uh, only a summary of bars, as I explained in the introduction. Some of the bars would be a combination of a lot of activities. So each bar in this case represent a group of other activities or smaller activities. We can use such an example in the planning phase of the project or maybe when you present to the top management team from your company or the top executives from uh, the client side. In this case, they come, they ask you, okay, what's the situation we have here? What's, what, how are we doing in our project? Then you can highlight it in a simple bar chart from all the big components. If you remember when we talked at the planning course and the initiation of a project at this uh, series uh, or this specialization, we highlight the work breakdown structure. When we refer to the higher level of the bar charts representation, I mean to talk about or to refer to the work breakdown structure in the higher level in the hierarchy, not the way lower level. So that's also very useful, simple, straightforward. You can use it. And I will wrap up here by one last advantage we have for the bar chart is the useful in identifying required resources. And we highlight this kind of an example for you about when we use the budgets. Sometimes it's very effective, for example, when you have the bar chart and highlighting, okay, how many labors I will be using in that specific activity. And that sometimes is very useful, actually. Just look at the y-axis, look at how many labors. As you, as a construction manager or a project manager, you will be able to plan ahead of time on exactly how I'm gonna manage my resources, my time, my money, all the four M's in construction uh, projects, uh, my materials, uh, manpower, machines, and money on uh, delivering the project at the end. So this is what are the advantages and the limitations and the disadvantages of a bar or Gantt chart.